I'm so glad this morning that your son Jesus Christ conquered the grave. Thank you for the power that we have to live our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit that you promised to us. Father, this morning, we ask your blessings upon us now as Pastor Abel comes to proclaim your word. That you would speak to our hearts and give us this day the word you have for us. Father, again, we thank you for this opportunity and look forward to hearing from you now. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please have a seat. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to be looking at verses 24 through 27. You know, it's hard to believe, but today is going to mark the end of our 40 days of purpose. And uh, mm-hmm. I just want you to know, I think it's been a great opportunity for us to be growing in our faith and people to get plugged in. And so I'm very glad that, that we have got here. It's been a great journey. You know, yesterday I received a lot of calls from different people, uh, some of which were telling me, you know, Pastor, we have to evacuate. Uh, the fire is getting closer to our home. Uh, another person called me yesterday and shared with me, my brother's house uh, burned down. Uh, he lost everything. Somebody else gave me a text last night and it said, would you please pray for us? The fire is about a half mile from our house and it's getting closer. You know, uh, our hearts goes out to those who are affected by the fires. And let me just say to you, if, if you are part of that, and, uh, and if, if you know people that we can help and, and try and minister to during this time, we, we want you to know that your church family loves you. And that if we can ever be a part of helping you or being a part of uh, anything to minister to you, uh, please allow us the opportunity to do that. You know, yesterday we got a glimpse of just how uh, fragile life can be. Today they're talking about going through the rubble just to see if people got out. And uh, God, God willing that those people were able to get out of that. You know, as we look at uh, our final uh, lesson here on the purpose-driven life, we got to ask ourselves, what is the meaning of life? You know, what did we learn over the last 40 days? You know, as we take a look at this chapter in Matthew that we're about to look at, Jesus comes along and says, look, you've got to be able to build yourself on a solid foundation. Because there's going to be times in life when the earthquakes uh, come and the fires come and, and the waters rise and the, the Santa Ana's blow. That, that those times you're going to need something to hold on to even when the fires get close. You know, in Matthew chapter 7, let's take a look at this passage. In Matthew chapter 7, we're going to be looking at verse 24. And the Bible says this. This is Jesus talking. He says this. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The Bible says if you want to be smart, then you're going to build your your life on on a relationship with Jesus Christ. It says the rains came and the streams rose and the Santa Ana's blew and beat against that house. Yet it did not fall because it's had its foundation on the rock. You know, one of the things that I've learned is that whenever difficult times come, whenever trials come and you're just not sure what's going on in life, it's always good to know that you can always count on God. You know, as a Christian, I've been a Christian for about almost 25 years now. I can honestly say that God has never failed me. Does that mean my life has been perfect? Absolutely not. But God has never failed me. Now, there have been a whole lot of times when I failed him, and, and many of you would, would know what I'm talking about. But God, when we come close to God, he is always there. He was always by our side. Now, take a look at the rest of this passage. The Bible, Jesus goes on to say, But anyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. And the rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. There's a lot of people who have troubles in life. When the difficulties come, their world crashes down. But the Bible says, if you build your house on a solid foundation, if you build your life on the life of, that Jesus wants for you, on his life, you'll have a solid foundation no matter what comes our way. You know, the whole Bible says that we are to make part, make God's word a part of our lives. 
You know, you just don't come to church and you read about it. You just don't come to to the Bible and open it up and read and say, you know, that's great head knowledge. I'm glad I now know that. The Bible says you've got to learn to put your faith into practice. And when you do that and you trust God, when the difficulties come, when the fires come, or when anything else comes your way that causes you to doubt or to, to, to reflect on why am I following God, God says, look, I'll show you who I am. I'll show you that I'm real. Now, I want you to look at this verse from Deuteronomy 11, 12 on your outline. Let's go ahead and pull out our outlines today. The very first verse at the top of your outline, we're going to read you that out loud with some great enthusiasm. You guys ready? Ready. Okay, let me ask that question again. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay, very good. In Deuteronomy 11, 12, let's read it out loud. Remember today what you have learned about the Lord through your experiences with Him. The Bible says that we've got to learn and remember what we've learned through our experiences with God. Why is that? Why should we learn the lessons that God is teaching them the first time that He shows us and He takes us through those times? Because if we don't learn, then we're going to have to learn them over and over and over again. Now, the funny thing about God is this. He will allow you to keep making the same dumb mistakes if you choose to. But he says this, I'd rather you build your life on a solid foundation and learn the first time. Remember today what you have learned. Well, today we're going to look at what did we learn over the last 40 days? If this is the first time you've been to this series, I'm glad you're here because you're going to get a glimpse of what we've been talking about over the last seven weeks. Now, notice this. Today, on your outline, what, what have we learned about God? Over the last 40 days, what have you and I learned about God? We'll take a look at number one. Write this down. We've learned that it's all about God, not me. It's all about God, not me. Now, I don't know why this is, but sometimes the longer we're, we're followers of Christ, we begin to become more inward focused. It is all about me, Pastor. And we talk about service in the church. And some people translate that to mean serve us rather than service. Does that make sense? And then the Bible over and over says this. It's all about God. We're to love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. We're to love other people just as much as Christ loved us. You know, and the Bible says it's not all about uh, me. It's all about God. Take a look at this verse in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, 2 verse 10 on your outline. I love this verse because it says, God is the one who made, how many things did he make, God? All things. And all things are for his glory. And he wanted to have many children share in his glory. Now, not all things in the world are good. And God doesn't create all the bad that's in the world either. But all the good things that God has to offer, all of that was created for him. And why was it created for his glory? And I love this. The Bible says he wants to have many children come and share in his glory. Now, we've been talking about this over and over again. But God desires you to be a part of his family. Isn't that true? Amen. God wants you to be a part of the local church. He wants you to be a part of his family. And you've got, you and I have got to understand that God did not desire us to live our lives in isolation. He desires us to live our life as his children, living life with one another. The Bible says that God made us to last forever. And we will last forever as a family. Now, good or bad, uh, dysfunctional or not, the Bible says the people that are, are going to church with you, those who have given their life to Jesus Christ, those are the family members that you're going to take into eternity with you. Sure, we want our own family members to go to heaven, but absolutely, those, those uh, brothers and sisters in the Lord, they're going to be right there with us. It's not about me, it's about God. Now take a look at Colossians 1.16. The Bible says everything got started in him and finds its purpose in him. If you want to know your purpose for life, if you want to know why God created you, you have to ask the designer, the creator. You have to read the instruction manual. You have to say, God, what is it that you want out of my life? And we say, God, I'm going to start making it about you and not just about me anymore. Now, what else did we learn about God? Number two is this, that God still does miracles. 
God still does miracles. He's in the miracle working business. We have to understand that God is always just a prayer away. You know, over the last 40 days, a lot of people have come to me and said, you know what, Pastor, God is really working in my life through the book and through the study and through the service. God is really starting to show me what my purpose is for life. And I'm excited about that. And, you know, I've been able to get excited about some of that uh, that people were saying in our church. Others have come and said, you know, you know, Pastor, uh, my relationships haven't been that good. I'm going to start working on those. 